GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. One, two, three, four. I believe it's a big challenge for our building um, to keep things in perspective and, and to, um, if we're going to get addicted to anything, let's get addicted to the process. And with that, we welcome you to Trust the Podcast, powered by Better Live Than Dead and the Gear Radio Network. This here is episode 133. Episode 133, my babies. How uh, how the hell are all y'all? I mean, uh, pretty damn good, John. Thank you for asking. I am Ryan Wolf, my co-host, John Cimino. You can hear this podcast, all Better Live Than Dead podcast, all Gear Network podcasts on First off, you got better live than dead.com, your network.com, mm-hmm. and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Make sure to hit the subscribe button as well to stay up to date on the latest podcast. With that being said, John, dude, yeah, no one, right? no one, <laughs> nobody circles the wagons <laughs> like the Buffalo Bills, my man, because uh, no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. I there love we go. Great timing. You're getting your, your trigger <laughs> finger is getting juiced up already. I love it, man. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I got to, it also helps with the volume check, too. So, uh, Chris Berman may have boomed in your ear there uh, really quickly, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, anyway, nothing that can't uh, be like, fixed in post. Like man. you were saying, Ryan, no, dude, dude, I'm, I'm getting the like the Buffalo Bills. So, so breaking down the fourth wall, uh, congratulations to my sister in law, Cassidy, and my new official brother-in-law Dwayne they got married on Sunday so I'm getting ready for a wedding oh. as I'm trying to watch the Bills and Dolphins game as I'm getting absolutely hype because uh-huh. of the Buffalo Bills game John Buffalo defeats Miami 48 to 20 there was there was I wouldn't say never uh, a doubt there was a slight doubt early on in the game but then once Buffalo finally stopped Miami and started to keep rolling, then you're like, yeah. okay, I see where this is going. Yeah, I, I was I was kind of of the mindset going in. And I know we had talked about last week the game being both of us kind of thinking the game was going to be closer than it, than it was. Um, but I, I kind of as I was heading towards a uh, family member's house, we were all kind of get together, watch, uh, watch the game. A number of members of my family are, are very, very big Bills fans. And um, as I was going there, I was thinking to myself, what if Miami put all their eggs in the basket of Denver last week and they're just and they just come here and get completely punched in the mouth? Well, and, and then is- I, I then I, sca- I sat back and I was like, no, no way possible. They just hung 70 on a professional football team. There's no way that they're going to get punched in the mouth right after, you know, punching someone else in the mouth that badly and boy was i wrong and this is by no means us writing miami's uh uh what's the what's the obituary thank you that's Mm the my brain no 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 they're they're still a very good team regardless they are this is this is how i always view it in in john you can speak to it lewis can speak to it mr perez can speak to it i'm very much of the thought process of yeah you're good when you start But it's not how good you are when you show up. It's how good you are after the league adjusts to you and you have to readjust to the league. Then we really find out how good you actually are. So right um, at this point in time, Miami, clearly Buffalo uh, in one of the most anticipated games of the young 2023 NFL season, the Buffalo Bills flex their muscles both offensively and defensively, John, to Mm -hmm. silently defeat. uh, I say this. Uh, hyperbolically, the greatest team of all time, the 2023 Miami Dolphins. <laughs> I know what I said last week about the Bills squad about, hey, my heart says Buffalo, my brain says Miami. Mm-hmm. Because again, going into the season, going into this game, Miami was everyone's uh, uh, hot topic, if you will, on of the tip course, of everybody's of course tongue. They were. Of course they were because of the, the, the history they, they made and the history that they almost like reset. Yeah, uh, in the week before, that was the talk of the town. Every Mike McDaniel's a genius. Tua has finally got it. This is, you know, and and re- don't get me wrong at all. I am not throwing any shade or shame on the Dolphins. They are a very good team. They are a team that is going to likely make the playoffs in one way or the other. But they, they kind of, you know, it's like when the Jets were overhyped. You know what I mean? In the beginning of the season with everything that happened and then just all of a sudden, boom, you know, with the Rogers injury. And then it was like reality hit and everybody's like, okay, well, these are they aren't who we thought they were, you know, 
even though last Sunday night's you game it might might say something different. But um, this team right here, I, I, I honestly, I think they believe their own hype coming into this game. And I believe they believed the narrative that was set in the beginning of the season that Buffalo may not be as dominant as they as they have been in in recent years like like that the, their their window has closed or something like that right I, i've heard that uh, quite a few times regarding buffalo so this was as much about buffalo themselves being hyped their coaching doing a tremendous job getting the getting the players motivated to play this big game which you know a rivalry game yes bills dolphins have always had a rivalry but we've got like it it reignited like in front of our in, in front of our eyes you can damn well bet all those players in the Buffalo Bills heard all the Miami's taking over the division now. The windows are closing for the Buffalo Bills, yada yada. And and I feel like they were they came into that game with more of a statement, more of a more more of something to prove than perhaps Miami might have. And looking at it as well, I mean, uh, going into it, I know, as mentioned last week, a good friend of the podcast, Chris Downey, pointed out that this was like Buffalo's quarterly exam. Mm-hmm. They aced it. I mean, give give Sean McDermott his flowers. He he has shown up. This defense has shown up every single game, even in their loss to the Jets. But, but John, it feels like Buffalo wasn't getting the appropriate respect simply because of their loss, early season loss to the Jets, which we've seen <laughs> since then. Even if the Jets offense is struggling, Zach Wilson's still finding his way. Um, it it very much is. They were very good defense. That's yes. the, that's the long and the short of it. Yes, Buffalo found play, ways they, to improve right. and get better. Right. So now, right. now they are on the tip of everyone's tongue. Where I believe both homerishly and um, uh, objectively, I feel like they belong there. I mean, it's no secret Buffalo does dominate Miami since Sean McDermott became head coach of the Bills. Buffalo is now twelve and two against Miami, including the playoffs with uh, a plus 177 point differential. This is also Buffalo's ninth win in their last 10 regular season games versus wow. Miami. I, and you want that I did not know. Wow. You want a fun stat too that again, Chris sure. Downey, because we always go back and forth. Um, hold on. I'm trying to get my phone to recognize my face here. There we go. There uh, go. Andrew Erickson at Andrew Erickson underscore E R I C K S O N of uh, fantasy pros. I purposefully did not put this in the podcast, John. Okay. Just found an interesting NFL quirk. The first three teams to face Denver this year, Las Vegas, Washington, and Miami, all played Buffalo the following week, all coming off wins. They all lost to the Buffalo Bills by an average of 31 points. Wow. <laughs> that is quite the stat. Holy hell. I would have never thought to look at anything like that, but you're absolutely right. It's, you know, when they when they play Denver, you know, they they kind of, you know, Denver's not very good this this season so far. They, you know, the early first part part of the season, they've they've been whatever Russ has been cooking ain't ain't been edible. Um, so where the, with the Broncos, there was massive changes for at least for the, the last year and a half. Massive changes, and Nathaniel Hackett getting hired and then fired the interim coach, um, um, Sean Payton coming in, all the hoopla surrounding that. Will Russell Wilson flourish under Sean Payton? Maybe, maybe not. Um, there's been continuity in Buffalo still. Like, I mean, yeah. yes, sure, Leslie Frazier, you know, kind of left the team o- over the offseason, but that's really it. There hasn't been a whole lot of turnover. You know, they're off- the OC, Ken Dorsey's back again another year. McDermott and the system is still there. You've got the core players still there doing the thing. I mean, and that's kind of what you want. And And where the Bills are right now, even with all of the yeah buts that everybody has about the league, we saw we we've seen this this season already. Joe Burrow is kind of like not Joe Burrow ish right now to start to start off the bat. You saw last Sunday night, Patrick Mahomes was I don't know what was going through his mind with some of the throws he was making to the Jets defense, but he looks like the league is starting to understand the, him just a little bit more too. And and that's the first you know, the, time too that anybody in college or pros has outdueled Patrick Mahomes statistically, which is imagine that of all uh, of all people, Zach Wills. And you know what? Hey, this isn't this isn't a Jets podcast, but I am the mafia's favorite Jets fan. And I will say I was very pleased with the performance. There's no real moral wins in football. 
But if there were one, I think this past Sunday for them would well, have been one. Um, but this is a Bills podcast. And to BLTD, BLTD this quick before we go over to the three big things here. Uh, first off, the podcast is seven pages long because the Bills, when they win, they win historically. We've got a ton of stuff to, to run over here. But um, essentially, in the in the case of the Jets, the reports that Robert Sala is going to lose the locker room, that they need to get rid of Zach Wilson. He may get fired if they don't make the playoffs or if they don't do mm-hmm. good enough, blah, blah, blah. Thing, right. This is no no such thing as a moral victory, but I'm going to say that this is like a moral victory. I want to see right. how the Jets come out next week, the week after, the week after, keep building off of this. And that defense, as we've seen against the Buffalo Bills, against the Kansas City Chiefs, um, they are able to perform appropriately enough that they should be able to win seven or eight games with the defense alone. They right. just have to get Zach Wilson more confident and more comfortable. And it really seems like it's working. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that one. But, John, our three big things, as always, brought to you by PuckLuck.com, your one-stop resource for all your National Hockey League sports betting action. Hockey is back within the next, I think, week and a half. Puck mm-hmm. Luck provides win percentages and score projections for each and every National Hockey League game to tilt the ice in your favor. Not sure what to better, just in a rut, not to worry. Puck Luck also provides expert picks to get the puck bouncing your way. Please note, though, PuckLuck.com, no way affiliated with the National Hockey League, its teams, or the NHLPA. PuckLuck.com provides data related to gambling and cannot guarantee the success of any suggested or related wagers. As always, please gamble responsibly now dissecting the offense as we always do every single week in our first of the mm-hmm. three big things josh allen 21 of 25 320 passing yards four touchdowns no picks with four carries for 17 yards and a touchdown now john i love that four carries for 17 yards uh uh stat there that tells me there's the running game is working I wanted to tell you here very quickly. This is the one thing that I was going to. I don't know if I was going to mention it later on in the podcast. What is happening right now within the NFL? And we're seeing it specifically with teams like the New York Jets. They're they're They've picked up on the Josh Allen's, the Patrick Mahomes is the Joe Burrows of the league. What they're right. challenging these dynamic offenses to do simply. Is take what the defense will give you because mm-hmm. they know. These these big arm dynamic quarterbacks, uh, Justin Herbert being another one of them, these big name dynamic quarterbacks are fine doing it for a little while. But then right. guess what happens? They get frustrated. They eat the ball down the field. There's your interception. Right. Game, right, right. Game's taken over. Sorry, my microphone came detached there for a second. That's okay. So that's what's happening. That that's what happened in game one with the Buffalo Bills and the Jets. That's what happened last week with the with the Kansas City Chiefs, and the New York Jets. Again, this is what teams are doing. So right. then how do you adjust? 21 of 25 for 320 yards. Josh Allen finished Sunday's game with a perfect 158.3 passer rating. Wow. Marking a new career high. Obviously, that's a perfect passer rating. I mean, rating. he was, he was, he was on like on point. On point. Like we were watching that and it was unbelievable to see. Pointed out by Pat the Pat McAfee show, Pat McAfee of the Pat McAfee show, if you can believe it. The last three games, Josh Allen is 72 for 94, eight touchdowns, one interception with a 120.9 passer rating with 70 rushing yards and two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns on 10 rushing attempts. Josh Allen became the second quarterback in franchise history to have a perfect passer rating with a minimum of 20 attempts, joining Doug Flutie at Seattle on December 23rd, 2020 or 20, 2000. Good Lord. December 23rd, 2000. Th- this is why I was saying 2020. He was yeah. 20 of 25. 366 oh, yards, three touchdowns. An awful no lot picks. of 20s there. <laughs> lots of 20s, lots of zeros, lots of wow. I will Allen's- say, I will say looking at that though, I ha- I have to acknowledge this. Flutie Flakes meets Josh's Jacks. Okay, Dude, go ahead. Uh, looking back on it, how different would the Buffalo Bills? Uh, what if they didn't bench Doug Flutie for Rob Johnson? Oh, but my God, we don't have right, enough yeah. time today yeah. for that or this week or this month, even honestly. But <laughs> right. That, that could be a bi week podcast <laughs> subject. That would be that would be a fun one. Allen's five offensive touchdowns tied a career high, uh, which has been accomplished three other times in his career, which very much so. He became the third player in NFL history to have tallied three career games of at least four touchdown passes and one rushing touchdown, joining Drew Brees, who's done it four times, Aaron Rodgers, who's done it three times. Allen's 84.0 completion percentage is also a career high and a franchise record. Allen also became the second player in NFL history with 300 plus passing yards, four plus touchdown passes, one rushing touchdown, and a perfect 158.3 158.3 passer rating joining Aaron Rodgers, who did it week seven of the 2019 season. I'm not done yet, John. He oh also, boy. he being Josh Allen, also surpassed Cam Newton uh, and is now totaled the third most offensive touchdowns through a player's first six seasons in NFL history with 188. 
per ESPN. Allen has now thrown multiple passing touchdowns in 12 straight games against Miami, including the playoffs, extending the longest streak by a quarterback against a single opponent in NFL history. Also, last but not least, Allen recorded his 40th career rushing touchdown, tying him for third all-time with Jack Kemp on the NFL's all-time rushing touchdown list among quarterbacks. Only Steve Young with 43 and Cam Newton with 75 have more career rushing touchdowns as quarterback. So again, when Josh Allen wins, John, Josh Allen wins historically. Yeah, he does. And that's, I mean, those are all like amazing stats there. And again, that that kind of, again, that chip on the shoulder. And that's the one thing that always kind of followed Aaron Rodgers. Whenever Aaron Rodgers had, you know, someone would hate on Aaron Rodgers or, or the Packers didn't do enough or whatever. Uh, he always had a chip on his shoulder. And every time he always played on, it had a chip on his shoulder, played with the chip on his shoulder. He was, he was lights out. And, and I am almost wondering slash feeling like the same thing is happening here with Josh Allen. He he may not have the chip that Aaron Rodgers does by this point in his career, but in the same, he kind of gets the same. I, I, it, and now being a Western New York native, we always hear Josh is God, Josh Allen, this, 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 right? Because, you know, he's he's uplifting this this area here. But uh, outside of Western New York, you do hear, oh, yeah, Josh is overrated. The Miami fan in particular, Josh is overrated. Josh, this is who well, it's because of this or this or whatever. And he here and you you've got to believe that he as a competitor that we have now that we now understand that he is. Is playing this season with a chip on his shoulder, because remember, Ryan, no one picked the Buffalo Bills to advance beyond the playoffs. They gave they gave everybody they gave everybody else but the Buffalo Bills the the Super Bowl respect. Everybody, I mean, you know, Jets John won the Super Bowl. For- Chiefs repeating, maybe the Dolphins getting in there because they're uh, Tua and, and 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 us. And nobody picked the Buffalo Bills at all. And I think that, and I feel like that's resonated with this team this year that they're saying uh, we didn't go anywhere. For Christ's sake, Craig Carton, who we know can be a horse's ass, uh, at one point said he would rather take Zach Wilson over Josh Allen. He would not trade them one for one, and then had to apologize. Uh, which was on TikTok, which was delicious to watch because again, <laughs> people eating their words is my favorite thing. I don't you know I, what I don't have the TikTok, but I'm beginning to I'm beginning to start to consider possibly the the possible idea of signing up for one. I don't want to, Just but to I, I feel like I may have to. Well, the Chinese already have all your data, so when people say well, they're going to steal your data, bro, we've got Google, we've got cell phones, everybody's got everything that uh, you want. I, Anyways, I, you know, to any of those people that say that, I, I, f- go ahead. Look at, I am probably, I may be an entertainer. I may be a pro wrestler, podcaster. You may think I'm this entertaining guy. When the cameras are off or when the microphone is off, I'm a homebody and I'm boring as shit. Go ahead and and see what you can find on me. That's fair. Hey, man, wide receiver Stephon Diggs, six receptions on seven targets. Game for Diggs. 120 yards and three touches. An incredible celebration with a fan's beers. He said, quote, (laughs) I owe somebody $18 after the game. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. It's his third game with Buffalo with three receiving touchdowns, passing Lee Evans for most such performances in franchise history. The ninth time in Diggs' career that he's tallied two receiving touchdowns in the first half of the game. And the first time he's done this with Buffalo, he's the second Bills player with three receiving touchdowns in a game against Miami and the first since Lee Evans on December 4th, 2005. Diggs finishes the game with uh, 734 career receptions, passing Calvin Johnson, who has 731, and Santana Moss, who has 732, uh, for 49th on the all-time NFL receptions list. It's also Santana Diggs Moss, is one of my one of my favorite receivers that I've played the game. It's also Diggs's fourth career game with 120 plus receiving yards and three plus mm-hmm. receiving touchdowns. Also, one more thing before I circle back real quick. Diggs also becomes the fifth player in NFL history with four or more such games of 120 receiving yards and three plus receiving touchdowns, joining Hall of Fame wide receiver Marvin Harrison and wide receiver Wesley Walker, who had four instances of that such game. Hall of Famer wide receiver Randy Moss with seven instances and Hall of Fame receiver Jerry Rice with nine instances. Now, you know what? I love that. I love it, though. I love it because a couple of weeks ago we were talking about the the Diggs hate that that. You know, and it was and it and I'm not gonna lie, it triggered me. It really triggered me. And I just I love seeing this. I I'm rooting hard for Steph Diggs. Well, and when you watch the game, there was one of the touchdowns where uh Josh called an audible, looked over at Steph, threw his hand back down, Josh did the same exact thing, and then Stefan Diggs, instead of running what I would presume to be an up and out or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, comes across the line, up the gut, gets a touchdown, beautiful. It was just absolutely great. 
Um, you know, obviously you know, there was the other you know what I would where, call that? What's I that? Would call, I, I would I would say Steph Diggs and Josh Allen both dog, big dog, on mm-hmm. the same page. They know exactly where each other's going to be at all times, and I think this this game on Sunday reaffirms that relationship, that absolutely that, that friendship, that 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 teammate ship, whatever you want to call it. It they kills are, that. It kills that narrative that there's something wrong between them. Well, I sure mean, we've heard, we've heard the rumors, and you know, it is what it is. Rumors mm-hmm. are such, but uh, I, I, again, it's it's a situation where when Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs are on the same page like they were on Sunday. Good luck beating the Buffalo Bills. Very, but. very, 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 very difficult to beat. A fun fact here. I never would have guessed Santana Moss had more receptions excuse me, than Calvin Johnson. Right? It, it was, well, I think it was probably because of the era of football in which Santana Moss played in. I mean, he played, you know, he started his career as a Jet. He ended his, his uh, tenure as a Washington member of the Washington football team. Yes. So I think a lot of that, once, the, uh, once Moss was traded from New York, to Washington, I think a lot of uh, a lot of his like brilliance kind of fell by the wayside because Washington w- was so poor. <laughs> you know, he was that Santana Moss was the highlight of those old school football team teams. Follow me there. That's fair. Um, but he was I mean, Santana Moss was a really, really, really good receiver in his heyday, uh, especially for New York. I mean, he, he was around in the era where uh, Vinny Testaverde and Chad Pennington and they, you know, that that was some solid, you know, not like the best quarterback play, but certainly was was solid quarterback play. And Moss was a highlight for for those teams and then as well, a highlight for um, those Washington teams as well. So. But, you know, again, getting out of that market, he flew under the radar on some poor Washington teams. That's probably why it was surprising. Absolutely. Moving over to running back James Cook, 12 carries for 29 yards and a touchdown with one reception on one target for 48 yards. Coming into Sunday, if I remember seeing the the uh, the cry on on the screen here, he was the only NFL running back in the league with 300 plus yards from scrimmage and no touchdowns. No longer the case. He finally got his first touchdown of the year. His 48 yard reception set a career high. I mentioned this because. That is, again, taking what the defense will give you. Josh mm-hmm. Allen was able to extend that play, did, did his scan around the field, and uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. James Cook pops out on the right side, gets the ball into his hands. It's, you know, four, five, six-yard drop. Right. Just a nice little rainbow to him, and he takes off and runs for 48 yards, So or for 40 yards in total. So, mm-hmm. again, this is why it's so important to be able to get the ball out quick and let those guys be dynamic and find their way because – if the running game is strong, guess what happens? Stephon Diggs is one on one, and you're playing Stephon Diggs one on one. Good luck. There are you're going to lose there aren't many you're gonna quarterbacks lose. Nope. who can stop him. And yeah, we saw not, that on not. Sunday with his touchdown. To go back really quick, the Absolutely. touchdown where he was, he was I know tackled, what you're he kept about too. chugging, yep. chugging, 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 yep. and ran it in. That sent the whole house into a frenzy. Even the non Bills fans that were that were there, you know, nobody was a Dolphins fan there, mercifully. But you know, even the non Bills fans there were like, "Holy crap!" Because like. I mean, the dude was just, they were lights out, man. They were as lights out as lights out could get. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And look at another one, Gabe Davis, three receptions mm-hmm. on three targets for 61 yards and a touch. He's tallied a touchdown catch in three straight games, tying his career long streak, which he had three straight touchdowns or a touchdown in three straight games on uh, games 11 through 13 and 2020 and games 12 through 14 and 2021. Uh, real quick, putting a bow on the O. Kicker Tyler Bass, six for six on extra points, two for two on field goals, including a 53-yard field goal. It was his second career streak of games with a 50-plus yard field goal. The other time this occurred for Bass was October 18th, 2021 at Tennessee. He had a 52-yarder. Next game, October 31st, 2021 versus Miami, he hit a 57-yarder. Now, before we break down the defense, John, we've Mm -hmm. talked about Aaron Schatz before and DVOA. Uh, he works for the the FTN Network. He shared that Buffalo is now the best three-in-one team that we've ever seen through four games since 1981, which how far the tracking data back goes back, according to DVOA, which the defense defense if adjusted value over average. It's a formula that helps identify the top teams in the league using advanced analytics. And Buffalo happens to be the best three in one team that we've seen I, according I, to that statistic. Again, Ryan, I will I will circle back to uh, one of the messages from last season. Uh, best in the business you are. I would have never even I've never even heard of that. So I mean, look at waking. I, I learned something new every week. So breaking down the fourth wall again. I know it's one of my favorite things to say here, but hey, 
I could say breaking kayfabe because now it is uh it is a real word. You can't. <laughs> it tell is me a, real a real word. I love yeah. it. I lo- anytime, till- anytime we can get any sort of wrestling reference in there, I'm 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 happy. So the amount you. of times in my life, John, that I refer to something as a gimmick, I swear to God, Aubrey wants to just <laughs> kill me. Uh, breaking down the defense, my kids line- know what gimmicks are. That's what's <laughs> just hilarious. go the, the 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 gimmick. What's, like, what's gimmick? that gimmick uh, over the, there? The, the, the what's thing, that gimmick the over there, Dad? It's my it's my water bottle. We'll get that gimmick out of here. <laughs> breaking down the defense, linebacker Terrell Bernard had five tackles, two solo, and a fumble recovery. Becomes the first Buffalo defender with fumble recoveries in back to back games since Matt Milano did it in games two and three in 2021. Defensive end Greg Russo, a dog all day. Three tackles, oh. all solo, two sacks, two tackles for loss, two quarterback hits, fourth career multi sack performance. Uh, for hold on one second here, uh, fourth career multi sack performance this season, and uh, and first year. this season in five career regular season games against Miami, Russo has recorded five and a half sacks. Now, John, oh. yeah, you're not kidding, dominating mm-hmm. on D, going further. Uh, on that DVOA, Miami still ranks as the third best offense ever tracked by DVOA through four games since 1981 after Sunday's performance. Mm-hmm. Like the D, the offense is still historically very, very, very good, and right. this Buffalo defense handled it, handled it perfectly. Oh, absolutely! Uh, yeah, this defense, this defense was no joke. This team was no joke. This it, just overall the team effort. Like, and I'm not gonna lie, there, there, there came a point during the game where a bunch of us went outside and started shooting rings, um, because you know we brought the we, we were listening to it, so I didn't actually see a lot of the defensive performance. But in in saying that, th- this this team overall, offense, defense, special teams, you name it. They, top to bottom it, it was it was a performance for the ages and well, you know and there's there's more there john i got more yeah. for you don't there's more, oh, more. The bone here all right miami miami entered sunday only having allowed one sack and five quarterback hits in the first three games of the season mm-hmm. buffalo uh pressured quarterback to a tongue of iloa on 14 of his 40 dropbacks that's 35 percent tongue of iloa had a league low 21.2 percent pressure rate in weeks one through three per nfl next gen stats uh, Buffalo, going back because I put the stat in the wrong spot, I would say it again. Mm-hmm. Miami entered the game having only allowed one sack and five quarterback hits in the first three games. On Sunday, Buffalo recorded four sacks, as mentioned, Rousseau with two. Daquan Jones had one. Ed Oliver had one. And Buffalo mm-hmm. also managed to record nine quarterback hits. Unreal, man. Unreal. Unreal. That defense, that, I mean, you, you can't, how do you prepare for that? You don't. You, you, you can't. can't. And here's the thing too, is that that, like, like literally the, the Buffalo bills on all sides of the ball took off Miami's cleats that they, that they would have probably put in the hall of fame for the game before and just beat the crap out of them with them. And again, I'm not done, not done yet. Don't forget Micah Hyde interception. One pick adds further perspective, (laughs) just how good the defense went or did on Sunday. A couple bad things though. We have to talk quick about these bad news uh, it's got to be quick because there weren't a whole lot of them oh it's going to be quick but the one is a very big deal cornerback christian benford left the game with a shoulder injury had x-rays at the stadium returned to the game keep an eye on his status this week cornerback tredavious white though oh this one broke my heart a torn right achilles expected to re- miss the remainder of the season after returning from a torn left acl he played in six regular season games last year both playoff games he had started all four games this season Per next-gen stats through the NFL, White allowed eight receptions on 15 targets, two touchdowns, just 3.2 yards per attempt as the nearest defender in coverage and had defended two passes this season. It sucks to see because of how much trouble he went through Mm -hmm. mentally, physically, emotionally coming back from a torn ACL to now have him tear his Achilles tendon. You can't predict these, as we've seen. You 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 can't can't, predict ball. These things happen. So um, Ryan, I, I when ball. this when this happened and when I and when I was seeing him uh, being being driven off uh, on the cart, I I wondered to myself, does he come back from this? So I ask you, and I even ask the listeners too. I would be very curious to what the to what the Bills Mafia listening audience would think. Do you think Trey comes back from this? And that's knowing what, what we knowing what he he went through last year to this year, like and seeing just how 
devastated he was. Like it was, it was hard to see him in that state. It broke my heart. I mean, he's one of the, he's one of the good ones. He's one of the good right. ones. He's he's a, a leader on that defense in that Absolutely. locker room across the board. Um, and I I do believe the Bills defense will rally around him. Just simply, the Bills as a whole will rally around him because hate to say it, they've been through it before, so they know what they have to do to fill that gap. You're not going to be able to replace Tre'Davious White. You Absolutely. can only try to prepare to to better yourself because now they won't be afraid to throw in that direction where Tre'Davious White was because he's not there now. But Personally, I said to my wife, I wonder too if he's gonna if he's just gonna call it quits because again, how right. much how much emotional, physical, mental, everything across the board, all that damage, yeah. uh, it's hard. It's hard to go back because you know there are dark times. There recovery is difficult, and Achilles yes. is very hard. Normally, yes. people don't come back. We talked about this with Aaron Rodgers. Normally, mm-hmm. players do not come back, and they are not the same player they were before an Achilles right. injury. Right. So th- again, that's those are all those things to to consider. I do, it's way too early to say, but I mean, mm-hmm. if if we hear rumblings of retirement, I won't be surprised. I but yeah, again, I wouldn't be surprised either. But if if Tre'Davious White, because I my guess would be as well with it being the fourth game of the season. And it's about a it's about a twelve month recovery. Best guess would be Tre'Davious White is back in training camp next year. He's on the pup, and then he returns after week five. Which, John, mm-hmm. seamless transition. Even though the Buffalo Bills lost Tre'Davious White, mm-hmm. they are getting back mm-hmm. future Hall of Fame linebacker Von Miller, dog. eligible to return. Big dog, eligible mm-hmm. to return following his pup stint, recovering from an ACL tear. Sean McDermott said, "Quote." He will practice. We will take this one day at a time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but buddy, yeah, with how I, well, with how well, not because because again, we know mm-hmm. we've talked about it. The Buffalo Bills defense doesn't blitz a ton. No, they're just getting natural pressure. Now uh, add, yeah. Now add, Von. Like it's making my hair on the on my arm stand up just talking about it. It's, it's add cra- Von it's Miller crazy. to that equation. When you take when you take the defense that that was on display this past week, and you add a Von Miller to that, ooh, well, you know it's gonna be you know some, it's gonna be some long too. days for some teams in this league this year. Let me tell you, the craziest part about it too is that the entire team has improved their play. We've mm-hmm. seen better play out of AJ Epinesa, which again, you're like, eh, you know, what is this guy gonna do? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay. Like I, I see what he's doing here. I see what's going on. So again, it's a situation where it's like players are improving their play. Uh, and we get to the point where I'm just trying to find something here really quick. They're, they're improving their play because they've been with each other long enough. They've had the, they've had the, 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 the coaching, they've had the ability to work with guys like Von Miller, like Leonard Floyd. You've seen Ed Oliver get better. You've seen Daquan Jones get better. You've seen, I mean, Greg Rousseau get better. Like it's just, mm-hmm. I'm running in my head. Like holy the crap! Entire, like, this is- the entire team seemingly like leveled up after that week one loss yeah. to the yeah. Jets. Like, and and again, I feel like it was a similar thing to maybe a couple of years ago when the Bills lost week one to the uh, the Steelers, and everybody's like, oh my god! And then they just turned around and just ran roughshod through the league. I feel yeah. like this is kind of like the same thing. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see at what point this season. Does the flame die die out? Because it, it, when it one, when it died out, when it died out that one year with when when they started zero and one, losing to Pittsburgh, and then they basically ran like ten straight, I believe ten or eleven straight. Um, when, when the Trey, flame, you, the, the one thing I'm worried about, John, sorry to jump in here, but the one no, thing no. I'm worried about, I'm very worried about, is there's going to be a letdown after when when Tre Davis White tore his ACL. There was a letdown because mm-hmm. then obviously a lot more stuff started to happen, a lot more crazy. Crazy stuff started to happen, uh, and then obviously the next season, the Bills have been through uh, understandably a ton of adversity these last few years. But they've they've put a good system in place. They've got, I mean, I I know Kyer Elam has been inactive for the first four games, but you got to think at some point it's put up or shut up for Kyer Elam. You've got oh, Christian, yeah. you've got Christian Benford who can step up. Dane Jackson has looked good. I mean, they've got depth. Worst case scenario, you've got. You've got the ability, and if there is any sort of, of um, any sort of blessing in disguise, and I hate to put it this way, but any mm. sort of blessing in disguise is that Tre'Davious White tore his Achilles tendon 
October 1st. Uh oh. The trade deadline is October 31st. Uh -huh. So you essentially have 30 days and a handful of games, bunch of practices to figure out, hey, do we need to go get help? Right. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if that's even a conversation they're willing to have or going to have. But my first thought, because again, at the end of the day, we all talk about sports or a business. So it's always mm -hmm. next man up. You're like, yeah, that's mm -hmm. devastating. But how is this team going to get better? How are I they would... going to how are they going to bounce back? And again, they've got Kyrie say... Elam, Christian Benford, Dane Jackson. Right. I'm sure they'll go sign somebody from either the 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 practice squad or they'll go pick up a free agent. But They've got time to figure it out. There should be no excuse because, again, John, you can't replace him, but you need to find someone who can kind of help fill that gap as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You've got an entire month to figure it out. You do Go figure it out. Uh, here, here's where here's where I stand on this, and I know we got to get to commercial break, so I'll be I'll be quick. Uh, uh, if the Buffalo Bills make a move by the trade deadline, like an actual move, move to acquire, you know, talent, talent, right? That tells me they're going all in. Um, because it tells me they're believing they believe believe mind the pun that um that they've got what they need here and this will take them past that point in the playoffs. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting month for the league in general, but specifically for the Buffalo Bills because they're I, you know if the season ended today, I hate that. You know I hate that, Ryan. But yep. right now they're they're kind of in control of their own destiny at this point. Yeah. And there are very good players out there. I'm just looking. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at some. And you have to believe Burrow is going to turn it around, and Mahomes is going to rebound from. But but the, even the, if the, the thing the the performance he had last Sunday, so you know that these other teams they're gonna they're gonna eventually heat up and start to rise up and elevate as well. Can the Bills sustain that or expand on what they've done since the Week One loss and and stay ahead of everybody? That's what I'm going to be very interested in seeing. Two things I want to point out before our commercial break. Von Miller is the active leader in sacks with 123.5, and he currently <laughs> ranks 27th all time with, again, those 123.5 career sacks. So, again, no. the rich get richer. Indeed. I'm going to bring up some, I'm going to bring up some quick information about Tredavis White after the commercial break. Going to talk a little bit more about uh, Joe Burrow because I didn't want to bring it up now. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to uh, pay some bills, and then we're going to come back and talk about wrapping up week four around the NFL here on Trust the Podcast on the Gear Radio Network. And we're back here on Trust the Podcast, wrapping up week four, our third of the three big things. John, we're going to run through this very quickly because I know uh, personal life calls, and we're running tight on time. Absolutely. So if you don't mind, uh, take it away, and you can read this this wonderful ad for us. Around the NFL, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Go Frost Yourself. Go Frost Yourself. It's located in Rochester, New York, and it does what other local bakeries do not. They bake from scratch, creating recipes themselves and using the best fresh ingredients that they can find to create delicious flavors for customers daily. Molly and Jen, our friends, Molly and Jen. Hi, Molly. Hi, Jen. They've worked tirelessly to create what Go Frost Yourself has become today, and their passion can be tasted from in the items that they bake. When you find yourself looking for an item for a special occasion, or maybe you just want to try their incredible cinnamon rolls, hey, not for nothing, my birthday's on December 5th. It's coming quickly. I may want to stop there, too. But if you're local, you can visit Dog. Go Frost Yourself storefront at 2544 Ridgeway Avenue or at GoFrostYourself.com. Shout out also to another birthday boy that's going to be uh, that's going to be celebrating a birthday this week as well, Mr. Ryan Wolf. Maybe you should go frost yourself, huh? I might actually do that because I'm going to get a uh, to free advertisement here on my birthday uh, Thursday. I will be turning 32, which I feel like uh, that is not possible. I'm going to be going to see another good friend of the podcast, Dan Ross, over at Art to Zen Tattoo oh, on hey, Stone Dan Road, Ross. Stone yeah, Road buddy. in Greece. I'm going to get myself a nice, nice tattoo. So maybe oh, I'll stop okay. over and go frost well, yourself and get myself a nice little treat. Let me let me go into the into the archives of the JC Money Show here and uh, Flavor Flav. Can I get a yeah boy for Mister Ryan Wolf and his birthday? Yeah boy. Maybe not as it. loud next time, Flavor Flav. Jesus Holy Christ, yeah, I'm about to have a heart. I'm old now. I'm about to have a heart attack, man. <laughs> oh please, Thanks. you're turning Thanks, 32 Flavor, in December. My the aforementioned December. I'll be I'll be 43. Get out. Well, here. I wanted to bring it up, John, because I always like to tell people. I've told this story many times, and I'll make it quick. I mm -hmm. grew up watching John on TV before I knew who John was. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the fact that we're still friends, that's, I'm that's, 32 that's, and he's, you know, yeah, it's, that's, it, uh, it, if that, if, I'll tell you what, if my, if seeing my own kids grow before my eyes didn't make me feel old, that sure as hell did. Thank you. I hear Ryan. the ping. I hear a couple more gray hairs pinging through that, that uh, scalp of yours <laughs> right now. Oh. It's the beard. The beard has the grays right now. Mercifully <laughs> knock on wood. Here's the wood. Listen, knock on wood. Uh, so far the, the, the top of the lettuce is uh, a okay right now. Well, running through this very quickly here. Yes. Chicago blows a 21 point lead, loses to Denver 31 to 28. They fall to 0 and 4. Wide receiver Chase Claypool, previously acquired uh, from Pitt for Chicago's second round pick in the 2023 NFL draft, used to select Joey Porter Jr., has mm-hmm. been told to stay away from the team after being a healthy scratch against Denver this past weekend. John, this oh. team is a disaster. On the bright side, they own the top two picks in the NFL draft through the quarter mark of the season. Speaking of. Awful luck. Uh, Green Bay, left tackle, favorite of Molly over at Go Frost. Yourself, she always gets upset when I share the news, so I, I do apologize. Turn off your radio here. <laughs> Lo- a left tackle, David Bakhtiari, placed on season-ending IR and went underwent his fourth knee surgery in less than three years. He is a oh, five-time geez. All-Pro left tackle, has only played in 13 games since the start of the 2021 regular season after tearing up his knee on December 31st, 2020. That's unfortunate. Green Bay Packers head coach Matt LaFleur would not comment on whether or not Bakhtiari would remain a, remain a Packer, let alone play in the NFL again. So we'll have to see more on that one coming up. Well, you know, I'll tell you, it feels like and, and you know, maybe it's because of the names involved, but I feel like lower body football injuries this season have really like there's been an uptick of those. Lot, John, I just feel people. like in, in general, I was going to bring it up again. Sorry yeah. to jump in. No. I was going to bring it up that it just feels like maybe because we're paying more attention to it. But mm-hmm. it feels like a lot more big name players are getting hurt this year. I mean, right. it's just, yeah, again, luck of the draw. You know, you can't predict it. It just happens the right. way it is. Right. But like, again, the Patriots lose Ma- lose Matthew Judon to a to a torn bicep. Yep. You've got David Bakhtiari going down. You've got Justin Herbert fractured his middle finger on his left non throwing hand this week. You've got uh, Cincinnati quarterback Joe Burrow with a right calf injury which has uh, led the Cincinnati offense, their lowest offensive points per game right. uh, through the first four games. Again, I'm, you know, that was just, you know, me just dropping a little nugget there, but, um, but again, a lot more big name injuries this season. It feels like, yeah, so it really does. It really very does. Weird, and, very weird. and I, and I don't, you know, I know in, in the beginning of the season, you know, when Rogers went down, the whole subject was about the, you know, the playing on turf versus grass and all that stuff. And I don't know if that has anything to do with all this still, but if it does, the NFL really needs to take a look at that and, yeah. and kind yeah. of get uh, the ball moving on that. I mean, if they're going to be, you know, putting, uh, you know, European football, soccer, uh, when they come to the Americas on a uh, natural grass, why, you know, I, I do see that argument there. So if there's science behind it, go, you know, go make that move, make that switch, save those players, Achilles, their knees, their, their tendons and all that. Uh, you can't predict it obviously, but it just, yeah, it, it really seems like it's, it's, heavily magnified this year and i and and we'll have more sound we'll have more more exciting sounds for next week too because i i do want to get that you can't predict ball uh there was a couple of be (laughs) be be a man there's a tiktok where a guy from boston i i think he might be a barstool guy which really makes my skin crawl but you know it's like he's a, a a very funny guy who will say ridiculous things like you have a concussion live with it deal with it get back on the field be a man and just is that the guy is that the guy that does the pizza reviews uh, he's one of them. That that guy's a real uh, shit bird. Uh, but he is. He is. But that that one that one video that circulated a couple of weeks ago was absolutely hilarious. I can't lie. I, I wanna I wanna do a quick update here. Will the Giants get Daniel Jones? Will they bench him before they get him killed? I I asked this question because oh. he's second in the NFL, being sacked twenty two times in four games. They're averaging thirty three or sixty three point seven five. Offensive snaps per game, which leads to 5.5 sacks per game. He's been sacked 10 times or sacked 10 times last night on Monday night football in 73 offensive snaps. Now, mind you, NFL leader Sam Howell of, of the Washington Commanders has been sacked 24 times in four games, but he was sacked nine times in 54 offensive plays versus Buffalo. So in non Buffalo games, he's averaged 74 offensive snaps and five sacks per game in those non Buffalo games as mentioned. Excuse me. After after this week, uh, the Giants play the Bills on Sunday Night Football, and uh, oh, should we just start praying for Daniel Jones now? Because <laughs> no time like the present to drop that one. We'll just leave that mm-hmm. one there, John. I want to look. <laughs> I want to look ahead 
<laughs> Week five, Buffalo Bills at Jacksonville at the Jacksonville Jaguars in London at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Kickoff 9.30 a.m. on Eastern time on CBS. Jacksonville 2-2 two and two coming off a victory over Atlanta, 23-7. to seven. They are So tied. what you're saying is day drinking starts very early. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to – we're going to make this nice breakfast casserole. We've been doing the – Every Ooh. single week doing something different in the crock pot. Nice. It's a very, very white of me to do. Uh, but it looks, <laughs> it's so freaking Listen, good. Food, food is food, man. I don't care. Give, food give, is food. Give, Football food is food. even better. Yeah, buddy. So Jacksonville tied for first in the AFC South. All teams are two and two. Quarterback Trevor Lawrence displayed a promising run last season. He started 2023 out slow. Outside the top 10 of passing yards, only has four passing touchdowns. But the bright spot for Jacksonville, linebacker Josh Allen. Six sacks, tied for first in the NFL. He had seven seven sacks in the 17 games last season. His career high is 10 and a half sacks. Looks like he is very much on pace to to, to break both of those. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, John, the ESPN matchup predictor, 79.3% of America believes Buffalo will defeat Jacksonville. I'm on the train there. I'm saying Buffalo goes to Jacksonville. Uh, I'm going to say 37 to 10 Buffalo because – why not? I'll give them. I'll, I'm also among the 79.3 percent of America that believes Buffalo is going to defeat Jacksonville. Don't think it's going to be. Um, I don't think it's going to be close. I'll go uh, a little bit more conservative though, and we'll say 31 13. The 13 coming in garbage time for Jacksonville. That seems fair. Now, real quick, pay attention. Kyer Elam likely will get the first shot to replace or to at least move up to to help out with the abs in the absence of Tredavious White. He's been obviously One, a, two, uh, three, a, a scratch, healthy scratch all season in the first four games. But you got guys like uh, the article here, A, a to Z Sports.com mentions Byron Jones, William Jackson, Bradley Roby, Casey Hayward, Eric Rowe. Those are again players that are available. Um, another one that I saw was uh, Kyle Fuller. There's a potential they could trade for somebody if necessary. But I, my, my thought process is this. They'll probably have tryouts today or tomorrow. I can't remember when they normally do that during the week, but I believe it's Tuesday. Um, and we'll be able to see, obviously, once the information comes out. I would have to believe Buffalo will sign someone to the practice squad, get mm-hmm. them in-house, get them up to speed giving Kyer Elam or whomever else may step in the ability to kind of show that they can work. And then if not, you bring a guy up to the, to the, uh, the main roster from there. If nothing else, it's a, it's a short week in terms of the team has to fly to London. So I mm-hmm. can't imagine they'll be signing anybody this week. No, my probably thought not. would be that they'll be, that they'll be bringing up, um, Kyer Elam, remember, from, maybe? Kyer Elam from the, from the, uh, healthy scratch. Bill, right. if you will but i again i don't know because they haven't put tredavious white on the ir yet i don't believe okay. so once that move happens i would presume there will be a corresponding move uh with that well i will say this yes we don't know that but there is one thing that we do know and that is no one circles the wagons like the buffalo bills couldn't have said it better myself chris berman With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, for John Cimino, I am Ryan Wolf. We are Trust the Podcast. You're not. We will catch you same time, same place next week. Talking Buffalo Bills, Jacksonville Jaguars, and we're continuing our prayer circle for uh, Daniel Jones coming up. So thanks again for (laughs) tuning in. As always, go Bills. And Steph Diggs, you are a true dog. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by The Gear Network.